Dear Diary, Since we got past Aston Villa in the UCL round of 16, we have played Brighton twice either side of an international break. Unfortunately in the first of those, our FA Cup defence ended with a 2-1 loss. Disappointing as we put out a strong side for that game, but we bounced back a few weeks later in the Prem with a 3-1 win to keep us on course for the title. In saying that, we have two fixtures coming up in between the two legs of our Champions League quarterfinal against Barcelona. They are one of the best teams in Spain and our record against Real Madrid isn't great, so we are in for a tough time. Hopefully, we can get a win at home for the second leg at the Camp Nou and set up an all-English semi. Until next time. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 104 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Arsenal. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we play the quarterfinal of the Champions League against Barcelona. So if you are looking forward to that in today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying this series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as we have seen through the intro, we have only played two games since the round of 16 against Aston Villa in yesterday's episode. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. As I said during that intro, disappointing in the FA Cup quarterfinal, maybe our players just a little bit more tired than I thought off the back of that Aston Villa game because we did put out quite a strong team, but did get knocked out of the FA Cup in the quarters. 2-1 at Brighton, so unfortunately both cup competitions we could not retain those after winning them last season, but thankfully in the Premier League did come back from that international break with a 3-1 win, quite a few of our best players coming off the bench in that one to make sure that we did pick up three points, so in terms of the Premier League we are still in second, four points behind Liverpool, but with those two games in hand, which if we do win we will go above them by two points is still in a pretty good position there in the Premier League to hopefully win that for back to back seasons. And also an injury update off the back of the international break and those most recent fixtures. Thankfully, Martin Udegaard is back from his injury, but unfortunately, Kalido Bloshi picked one up against Singapore on international duty for Qatar. He will be out for the first leg, out for five more days, so he's going to miss this one from the Emirates, but should be available for the Camp Nou second leg from the bench in the end it's not the worst injury of course because he isn't one of our starters but still quite a useful squad player to have will not be featuring in the first leg but as I said thankfully Martin Udegaard is back for this time it could be an interesting one as we do take on Barcelona they got passed into Milan narrowly in the round of 16 that is a team who we did beat pretty comfortably when we took them on earlier this season in the league face hopefully it does mean we are the better team for this tie, but it is a quite strong looking squad there at Barcelona, as you can see down in that bottom right corner. Our record so far against Spanish teams, not that great, at least the big ones in particular, Real Madrid. So hopefully we can do a job here on Barcelona over the two legs and make our way through to the semi-finals. We will play the winner of the tie between Liverpool and West Ham, so it could potentially be an all-English semi-final if things do go our way, but this is definitely going to be interesting, as I said, with that record that we do have against Real Madrid, Barcelona, you'd imagine, pretty close to that level, so hopefully we can finally beat a team out of Spain, one of the better ones from that country, and make our way through to the semi-finals of the Champions League, but I think that's all that we need to cover off before the first league of this one, we'll come back shortly with the team sheets from the Emirates as we take on Barcelona in the first league of the Champions League quarters. And here are the team sheets for this first league. In terms of us, quite a few changes at the back with a few players still tied off back of that international break. Sasinga at right back, Yakubu at left back, and also we have Kamara over Saliba. So it's definitely a little bit of a makeshift defense, but hopefully they can do a job apart from that though full strength in the further forward parts of the field. Barcelona looking quite strong going into this one, but hopefully 
we can pick up a good result at home to take into that second leg from the Camp Nou. And right on the 15 minute mark, we get the first highlight in this one. It is a throw in our favour. We nearly give that one away there to Diogo Jota, but thankfully do get it back. Yakubu plays that more centrally to Bamba. Starts to make his way forward on a little bit of a Joel Matip-like adventure. Good shot that forces a good save out of Malier. Still nil all coming up to the 20 minute mark. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening highlight yet again, we are in position this time looking to play out from the back with a goal kick. Singo plays that one forward to Saka down that right hand side. Nice ball in behind here for Kylian Mbappe. Malier with a shocker at the back boots that one straight into Araujo and Mbappe makes the most of it. Puts that in to an open net. We will take that all day long. It's a very fortuitous goal. Absolute scenes there at the back from Barcelona. Malier straight into the centre back and Mbappe did somewhat anticipate that and puts that one away and off the back of a pretty good start. Bit fortunate, but we do go 1-0 up. And that was it for the first half of this first league of this Champions League quarterfinal. Just those two highlights and thankfully made the most of that gift that Barcelona did give us. We are going to make one change here at halftime. The defence not doing badly, but Yakubu is down to a red heart. Balde is on the bench, is a little bit injury prone and not quite on a full green heart, but still it's our best option. Hopefully he can cope with 45 minutes and we can hold on to this 1-0 lead maybe, even add to it a little bit, but things going reasonably well so far. We'll get things back underway, 1-0 up off the back of the first half. And just shot of the arm, mate, we do have a free kick here to get things underway. In the second half, Wilfred Singo gets his head on the end of that one, puts it bottom right corner. And things going very well here in this quarterfinal. 2-0 up at the Emirates. That would be a really nice scoreline to take into the away leg. That camera angle for the replay. Absolutely useless. But Singo grabs a goal. Having a very good game at right back. Albeit right off the back of that. There is a highlight here potentially in favour of Barcelona. Having the ball here for a decent spell for the first time in this game. Kai Havertz with a shot. But thankfully... Not much of an angle to work with in Ramsdale. Does make the save. Still 2-0 here at the hour mark. But a few players now down to red hearts. So we might make some substitutions. The goal scorer Singo is down to a red heart. We will bring on probably Vaskovic in this situation. A little less injury prone than the likes of Lamine Cassie. We'll just see if he's better suited at left back or right back. Doesn't make too much difference. Sabalde can stay out left. Also Saka and Udegaard down to red hearts. Carvalho and Vera can come on for those two, not too long off the back of us, grabbing a 2-0 lead. And going for 10 minutes off the back of that second goal and that most recent batch of substitutions, there are more players now down to Red Hearts. We have one substitute left, and Gabriel Martinelli is the most injury prone of those players on a Red Hearts. A Trinkard can come on out left wing, still 2-0 up, with only 20 minutes left in this first leg. And very shortly off the back of that last substitution, it is here Barcelona who do just hold the ball. Inside of our half, Danilo plays that one for two Pedri. Now, Gabi Danilo was a player I was looking at earlier in the window before I realized probably wouldn't be able to register him as a replacement for one of the centre backs, which we did sell. But they do keep the ball quite nicely here, Barcelona, albeit play that one all the way back to Kunde. Now, Gabi out to Pedro Porro, who is on a yellow card, albeit good pace from him. There picks out Kai Havertz, who somehow. Out jumps our centre backs and Barcelona back in this one. Now only one goal down with 15 minutes left. Good work there from Pedro Porro gets in behind. I believe that is it. It's actually Trinkau. I thought it might be Vaskovic, but Trinkau he does there for pace. And somehow Havertz wins that one in the air and makes it 2-1. And in the dying stages of this game was just about to go a cautious mentality, but a highlight has started here. In favour of Barcelona, Pedri with a shot, it takes a wicked deflection and finds its way into that right corner. And we are blowing this one late and all of a sudden the momentum is with Barcelona late in this one with only a few minutes left. They make it to all Kamara, heads that one away, Pedri Lo finds a bit of a gap and it does take a bad deflection there off of Bumber. I think Ramsdale would have saved that off the back of that. We will go positive. All the later stages of this game and the four minutes of added time. But it does look like it's going to be all square going into that second leg at the Camp Nou. And that's a little bit hard to take because for most of that game, 
we were well and truly on top, but Barcelona did come home with a wet sail. That Kai Havertz header got them the momentum, and that late Pedri goal looked very unlucky, but to be fair, the first goal that we scored in this game, also pretty fortunate. So I guess quite a fair result, especially those stats that you can see there top right corner were very even, and it does mean we're going to at least have to take this game to extra time or penalties at the new camp if we can't win away from home, which is a tough ask, but very interesting situation now for us here. We need to pick up a win on the road in Spain if we are going to win the Champions League this season. Otherwise, we will get knocked out in the quarterfinals. Liverpool doing a job there over West Ham. That will probably be our semi-final opponent, but before then, got a bit of a job to do as it's two all going into that second leg from the Camp Nou. And just stopping in quickly before we do get stuck into that second game of today's episode, two all heading into that one from the Camp Nou, but we did actually play two Premier League games in between now and that first leg. It's a very busy schedule. I did suspect that might be coming up, of course, when we did have that very quiet patch in late February before we did play that round of 16 tie. Now it's coming back to bite us at a horrible time of the season, but thankfully we did pick up two wins first up on the road, 2-1 away at Leicester, thanks to two second half goals through Vieira, and off the back of that, a 4-1 win at home over Wolves. So two good wins for us there, and it does mean in the Premier League, now only one point behind Liverpool, but with only one game in hand, so still on track to be picking up back-to-back -back titles, albeit still a fair way to go in that two-horse race between us and Liverpool who we could end up playing in the semi-finals of the Champions League in tomorrow's episode. But before then, we need to get the job done here on the road at the Camp Nou. No more injury concerns off the back of that first league and those Premier League games that we have played, albeit a few tired players, as you would expect with this being our fourth game inside a week. But hopefully we can get the job done here away from home and make our way through to a Champions League semi. We'll come back shortly with the team sheets from the Camp Nou. And here are the team sheets for the second leg from Spain. They are Barcelona. They look very similar to how they were in that first leg back at the Emirates where they did grab that late momentum. Hopefully that has changed off the back of a week's break. But in terms of us, back to what is pretty close to our first choice 11, both Cassie and Balde at wing back, but still Kamara over Saliba. Very injury prone, but apart from that, at full strength also, Al Bloshi back from his injury and is on the bench. But two all the way from home, can we keep alive in this season's Champions League? And just before the 15 minute mark, we the first highlight in this one. Tio Hernandez there with a throw in down that left hand side for Barcelona. So far the only bit of action, Kamara has picked up a yellow card. So maybe we need to take him off at half time. But Pedro Porro in space now down that right hand side. Lovely ball there from Jota. Picks out Pedri, finds the back of the net. Hopefully, he was offside. Apparently, it looked like he was fractionally offside, according to the commentator. But he is blind. The goal has stood. And we are in a little bit of trouble now. Barcelona grabbed that momentum late in that first leg. And it looks like it's continuing early in this one. We go 1-0 down just shy of the 15-minute mark. And very short off the back of that opening goal, we are trying to play out from the back there. Martinelli tries to switch that one to Bakayo Saka. It's intercepted now. Jota here, it looks like, gets pushed in the back from Balde inside the box. It's a poor position to be doing that because don't think he would have got a shot off the air, which would have tested Ramsdale at all. But it is a VAR check for a penalty. It's been awarded. We could be in all sorts of trouble here. We do demand more. Hopefully, it might help here with Aaron Ramsdale, Tio Hernandez is on the penalty, and Ramsdale thankfully with a save, and Bamba clears that one. I think off the back of this, we might just drop our defensive line, because it does look like that is a little bit too high for us at the moment. We'll drop it back from much higher to higher, and see if that does just help us get back on track in this one, but Barcelona do still have a corner off the back of that penalty save, thankfully. Bamba does clear that one away, Odegaard will try and do something on the counter-attack, but the player who missed the penalty in Hernandez does take that one out for a throw-in, but it's been a dreadful start. Thankfully, though, Ramsdale with a penalty save to keep it at 1-0. And only seconds off the back of that previous highlight, including that penalty save, now it's a free kick here for Barcelona. Javi 
puts that one into the mixer. Thankfully, Bamba will head that one away. Albi Olaho will find Pedri inside the box, open on that left-hand side. He beats Ramsdale off the back of that previous penalty save. And I dare say that will make it 2-0. Also, Cassie picked up a yellow card before that highlight, probably, in giving away that free kick. And now we are in real trouble here. 2-0 down in the day, 4-2 on aggregate. In fact, that one actually goes over Ramsdale, but it's been a dreadful start. 2-0 after 20 minutes to Barcelona. And going all the way forward to the 40-minute mark for the next highlights, I think we were able to turn off the tap a little bit, albeit Havertz there with a decent chance from a header. Of course, he scored one of those in the first league. Thankfully, that one does come off the post, and it is still 2-0 as we do enter injury time in this first half in Barcelona with a throw-in inside the final third. Thankfully, Kamara, good clearance there, albeit Barcelona do keep the ball. De Jong plays that one back, and now it's Teo Hernandez down that left-hand side. So far, his penalty miss doesn't look like it's going to cost Barcelona too much because they have been well and truly on top of us here in this first half, albeit poor pass there. And Lamine Cassie plays that for to Erdegaard. Martinelli through there for Mbappe. Falls a bit, fortunately, for Erdegaard. Finds the back of the net. That one goes through the hands of Malier, who so far is not having the greatest tie. Of course, that goal he gave up first in the previous league. We just booted that one straight into his centre back. A bit of fortune about this one. Mbappe, Teo with the tackle. But then Udegaard with the shot goes through the hands of Malier. And we are somewhat back in this one off the back of a very poor first half performance. 2-1 as we do head into the sheds. As you can tell by the stats though, well and truly the worst team in that first half. We're going to make a few changes here at halftime. Both those defenders on yellow cards we will take off. We'll bring on Singo at right back. And Yakubu in place of Kamara, a little less injury prone than Saliba, who was our option from the bench in that position. And hopefully with that late goal in the first half, we can grab the momentum like Barcelona did in that first league. But it was a very poor first half. We'll get things back underway, down by a goal, and only 45 minutes left in the second league. And it's only taken a few minutes of the second half for the first highlight. Barcelona here are trying to play out from the back. Interesting tackle there down that left-hand side, but thankfully doesn't connect. And now Bakayo Saka inside the box does get off a shot, albeit from a tricky angle. Malier with the save, but it does look like starting to find our feet in this one now, but still 2-1 down. And roughly 10 minutes off the back of that previous highlight. Now we have a throw in here down this left-hand side. Singo starts to make his way inside the box and beats Malier from a very tight angle. Now two goals for him in this tie, and we are all square after what can only be described is an awful start, and now the momentum, unlike the first league, might be completely on our side. Malier should really be saving that, but still a good finish from Singo from a tight angle. Two all with a half hour left, almost immediately off the back of that, a throw in in a very similar position. Yakubu plays that back to Singo. Yet again, Martinelli on the volley, his 19th goal of the season, and just like that, we take the lead here at the Camp Nou, and maybe we have found a way to turn this one around, albeit don't think much of it had to do with anything that I did apart from that change in our defensive line, but still, Barcelona did score off the back of that. That's really good work from Singo with the assist, and Martinelli with that finish just inside that far post, and now we do have a one goal lead. We'll take off Saka on a 6.5 for Carvalho, and just adjust some opposition instructions off the back of grabbing that one goal lead with two quick fire goals, largely thanks to Wilfred Singo. And just about to enter the last 15 minutes of this game, as you can see, Balde is down to a red heart, so I think we're going to make a substitution here before this highlight does take place. Buskovic can come on for him. We'll save our last substitution up in case we need it late, but it is a free kick here, which Pedro Porro is going to take, thankfully. We clear that one away, Perey. Finds Mbappe in a bit of space. Porro with a foul on a yellow card, exactly like the first league, but this time it looks like he might pick up a second one. That is a very nice highlight because it did feel like it might be a dangerous free kick there from Barcelona. He gets a red card. They are now down to 10 men, and we have a one goal lead with only 10 minutes left. Yeah. And just as things were looking so good, unfortunately, Martin Udegaard here is going to be forced from the field with a lower leg injury. It is a red one, but hopefully 
not too serious. Of course, he's only just come back from a prior injury, but thankfully we did save up that last substitution. Fabio Villa will come on for him with just over five minutes left, still up by one goal. And just entering the last few minutes of this one, plus injury time, there is going to be six minutes added on here, so that injury to Udegaard might have been a little bit more serious than first feared that could affect our chances against a team like Liverpool in the semi-finals. And we do make it that far off the back of a come-from-behind 3-2 win at the new Camp and 5-4 on aggregate. Was a little bit worried, of course, off the back of the end of that first leg. And the start of this one, we got off to a dreadful start. That penalty miss, that save from Ramsdale, very important in the end. Barcelona did score not too long off the back of that, but thankfully Odegaard with a goal before the half. And then Wilfred Singo, some big effect from him in the second half with a goal and an assist for the winner through Gabriel Martinelli. And we are going through to a Champions League semi-final by the skin of our teeth. We win 3-2 at the new Camp, 5-4 on aggregate. And we will take on Liverpool in the semis tomorrow. So a big come from behind win for us there at the Camp Nou. That was a very nice win. Of course, it did look like there we would be in trouble for most of that game, especially off the back of the start. But thankfully, we come back off the back of that slight change to our defensive line. Not too sure if that was the only factor, but did seem to help. And we do win 5-4 on aggregate, as you saw before. It does mean we are taking on Liverpool in the semi-finals. In tomorrow's episode, of course, that will be interesting. Our record against Liverpool in the save is not the best. And they are the team we have been fighting for the Premier League title with ever since we have got here both last season and this current season. But we do also have to check on that potential injury to Martin Odegaard. They did add on a fair bit of injury time, six minutes. So I'm a little bit concerned how serious this one could be. And he is gone for the rest of the season. Unfortunately, Martin Udegaard, a broken lower leg. Five to seven months will send him to the specialist. But he will not feature for the rest of the season. It does mean that someone now like Haig Sterling might have to step up four more minutes in the Champions League. And Vera will be our starting cam for the rest of the season in that first choice 11. But that is a big injury. Our captain gone for six months. He'll be out for a little bit of the start of next season as well. That is not what we wanted, but thankfully he did score a goal, which did help us get through to the semi-finals. And I think we'll leave things there off the back of that somewhat sour ending. So if you enjoyed today's episode, coming from behind to beat Barcelona 5-4 in the Champions League quarterfinals, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you haven't done so already and have been enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. As I said, we'll come back tomorrow and we will play the semis against Liverpool. That could be very interesting. As I said, not a great record against Jurgen Klopp's men so far in the save. In fact, they did beat us just last month in the Premier League at Anfield. That will be a tough test also. The other side of the draw, the other semi-final, is between Manchester City and Bayern Munich. Hopefully it was Man City who do make their way through the final if we get there, because so far, Man City, the complete opposite of Liverpool. We have an excellent record against those guys, but first up, we need to beat Liverpool in a Champions League semi-final tomorrow. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.